Hi everybody, my name is Max Patiuk and I'm a web developer at Specify Software Consortium. Today's talk is going to be about the importance of increasing quality standards when publishing internal APIs to external users. And I'm also going to share a case study from our experience and the challenges we faced in the process. Most modern web services consist of a backend that stores and processes the data and the front-end that displays the data to the user and waits for the input. Since users accessing your product only see the front-end, the communication between the back-end and the front-end doesn't get much attention. It's usually implemented using internal APIs, which rarely have documentation or automated tests for that matter. But later, if you decide to make these APIs available to developers of third-party tools, for example, to allow for integrations between different products, then suddenly there is a much higher quality expected of the APIs. They must have comprehensive documentation that is always up to date, as well as on-the-fly validation with meaningful error messages to help diagnose the issue, and most importantly of all, a consistent uptime, as customers have very little tolerance for downtime. OpenAPI is a machine-readable API documentation specification that can help significantly with fulfilling these requirements by helping to automate testing and other common maintenance tasks. It allows one to formally describe the input parameters for each API endpoint and the range of possible responses. Later, this information can be used to provide on-the-fly request validation, automated testing, and to create interactive documentation. But first, let's talk about our use case. Specify 7 is a biological collections data management platform developed by Specify Collections Consortium. This presentation summarizes the challenges and lessons learned in the process of publishing the existing backend Specify 7 APIs to a public facing external API. Each Specify 7 instance comes with around 200 resources and a standard set of create, read, update, and delete operations for each of those. Additionally, there are endpoints for bulk data import, adding attachments, handling user application, and permission management. Uh, due to a high number of endpoints, manually adding the OpenAPI schema for each was like out of the question. Instead, we decided to utilize the existing infrastructure as much as possible. For example, the OpenAPI schema for all CRUD operations is inferred from the data model, and this is why any data model changes would automatically update the OpenAPI schema. Other endpoints like bulk data import, attachments, and user permissions are implemented in the code as functions, with each having a doc string describing request parameters and the role of an endpoint. The functions also have decorators, argument types, and return types. All of that information can be parsed and converted to a schema. It was just a matter of making sure that every endpoint had a doc string description and writing a script for converting that to OpenAPI. The auto-generated schema was reasonably good, with only a few endpoints still needing further manual adjustments. The only problem with this approach is the fact that endpoint descriptions may get out of date when the code changes, for example, which in turn would generate an incorrect schema. For this and other reasons, we wrote a testing framework that reads the schema for an endpoint, automatically generates permutations of request parameters based on that, uh, sends a dozen of different requests to that endpoint, and compares all of the responses against the schema. If any response doesn't match the schema, we know that either the schema is out of date or there is a bug in the code. In either way, the testing framework automates a lot of testing. Additionally, it can even be configured to test a whole chain of requests where each response depends on the previous request. For example, create a resource, then fetch it, update it, and finally delete it. We also wrote a library called LMTest to handle the scheduling of these automatic tests, as well as log retention and error reporting via webhooks. Another really cool outcome of having OpenAPI schema and the testing framework was the ability to add on-the-fly request and response validation. Every request you send to our API is firstly going through the testing framework, where the request parameters are validated, and if any parameters are invalid or missing, a developer-friendly error message is generated. And so the endpoint itself doesn't have to worry about validating the request anymore. 
For example, this is the error I received when I forgot to pass a required get parameter. Uh, but then if I pass a parameter but don't provide a value or provide a value of incorrect data type, a different error message is displayed. It's even able to validate the request body of a post request. For example, in this case, the request object had a missing property. Finally, but not less important, the OpenAPI schema can be converted into auto-generated interactive documentation. For example, this is a documentation for specify seven endpoints. Each endpoint is described here, along with the request parameters, the response schema, and you could even try out sending the request to the endpoints right out of the documentation. I would like to conclude my presentation with an overview of exciting technologies that can help us further improve our APIs. So at the moment we used version 3.0 of the OpenAPI specification, but the most recent one is 3.1, which aims to improve compatibility with JSON schema, and this is why it would allow integration with JSON schema validation frameworks. Unfortunately, at the moment, OpenAPI 3.1 is not yet very well supported by practically any tools, and that is why we are just staying hopeful that this may change in the future, for example, in the next year or so. But a far more exciting technology is GraphQL. It forces all endpoints to be strongly typed, but in return gives us on-the-fly request validation, the response validation, auto-generated documentation, and great flexibility. Not to mention there is an active community, so testing frameworks are abundant. So the biggest drawback of migrating to GraphQL for us is that it would require rewriting all of our APIs or adding and maintaining an abstraction layer on top of our existing RESTful endpoints. As a reminder, here are the technologies and tools we discussed today. Open API, the machine readable API documentation specification, then the testing framework, which is available in GitHub, LM test, the test scheduler and error reporter, and GraphQL, the next generation API design language. So that's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed the presentation and learned something new. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them now, or you can email me later. My contact information is on the screen, and have a good day.